No battle mech in the Battletech universe has received as much undeserved attention as the urban mech. Through countless memes on forums, MechWarrior games, a prolific amount of community art, and even a gigantic inflatable paid for by Catalyst itself, the mech has become a Frankenstein's monster of cringe. At a certain point, the ironic love for the urban mech became real, and it's just too late to stop lest we do some serious reflection about how we spend our free time. My dislike for the mech has only grown in the past few years of being a Battletech content creator, as it's extremely common for good and interesting designs of battle mechs, tanks, aerospace fighters, and even battle armor to have just a single piece of dated art. Many times, when I cover a lesser known mech on this channel, I see comments along the lines of, oh, I had no idea this mech even existed. Meanwhile, let's take a look at what shows up when we do a Google image search for the urban mech. Can you see the issue? Sure, there's always going to be favorite mechs out there that are popular with fans. The Atlas has its own set of memes that border on cringe, but at least it's a good mech with a solid bit of lore to back it up. Even the official lore for the urban mech takes a swipe at its existence. In the 3025 technical readout, the deployment info states that the urban mech is best when battling infantry and armor in the heart of a city. Ah yes, let's take a moment to appreciate the value of the AC-10 at killing infantry. There are at least a dozen mechs in the same TRO that would be better for the task of urban combat. But mech frog, the urban mech is super cheap, I hear screamed from the peanut gallery, and you would be correct. Orgus Industries did sure produce a lot of these little guys at very low cost. The only problem I see with this argument is that unless you're also committed to piloting the urban mech with an equally cheap and disposable mech warrior, it doesn't really work. Being a mech warrior takes skills developed over time, and piloting an urban mech is a great way to make sure you die before you develop any of those skills. No matter how cheap the urban mech is, it's not worth it to put anyone inside the cockpit who might be able to use it to even a marginal effect. You're better off building tanks and training a tank crew, which would be comparatively much easier and less expensive. You're welcome to disagree, but there's a reason why tank development in the 20th and 21st century tended towards more expensive and better equipped tanks rather than swarms of crappy cheap ones. I think history is on my side. So before we get to the Urban Mac 2 c story, I'm going to take this opportunity to beg and plead with the talented people out there in the community to please give the Urban Mac a rest. I understand it's somewhat hypocritical for me as I'm writing this video script, but people have been begging for it for me for a while, and if I don't give in, they're going to start mailing me dangerous things. It would be easy for me to make videos that focus on just the most popular mechs, but I have made a conscious decision to cover lesser known mechs, even if it doesn't bring in thousands of extra views. There's lots of really cool stuff out there. Let's start giving these other things some attention. Find a mech that hasn't been given any limelight and reimagine it with your art. Write your next story using a mech other than the urban mech Atlas or Timberwolf. Please don't let the silly memes suck all the air out of the room and cause damage to the IP through sheer exhaustion. I think Battletech will be much better as a result if we expand our horizons a little bit. Now let's get going. The Urban Mac 2C was the brainchild of Clan Coyote. Yes, the clan known for their technological leap forward with the Omnimech also apparently dumped time and resources into upgrading one of the least useful battle mechs in existence. I'm sorry, I really am trying to restrain myself here, but it's just comically bad. Okay, deep breaths. Let's do this. Apparently, the urban mech was high on their list of mechs to receive some upgrades. After digging through historical records from the Amerus Civil War and identifying some of the mechs' limitations, they came up with a punch list to improve the design. Identifying its slow speed, limited jump distance, and weapon shortfalls, the Coyote scientists tried to address all three with some measure of success. The original Urban Max Linux 60 series standard fusion engine was pulled and replaced with a clan model XT4 standard, which pushed the max speed to 54 kilometers per hour. That's a blazing fast 33.55 miles per hour for those of you in America. Now, while it is an improvement over the original Urban Max Stellar 32.4 kilometers per hour or 20.1 miles per hour, it's still not enough to make it an effective combatant in an urban environment. There are plenty of examples out there from very recent and even ongoing historical conflicts 
which demonstrate the limitations of slow-moving armored vehicles in an urban environment. It's also worth noting that the mech's lack of arms make it prone to have severe difficulty standing once it falls over. But piloting skills never really come into play when walking on Ferrocrete roadways, right? But I digress. The Clan Light Series Mark II jump jets improve the 2C's leaping ability to 90 meters, which is a significant improvement and something the mech really needed to at least approach being deserving of its name. Being able to use jump jets in an urban environment is incredibly useful, and the miserable 60 meter jump distance of the original is near unforgivable. To the Urban Mech 2C's credit, the Coyotes did not go overboard with endo steel or ferrofibrous armor, so they were keeping the costs down. The Mark VI standard light chassis was adequate, and six tons of forging ZK-11 standard armor will keep the pilot alive for a little while. Though keep in mind, this isn't any better armored than its inspiring cousin. The build 1685 Tacticom communication system is functional without any available reports suggesting issues. Same goes for the HT-9 TTS targeting and tracking system. As far as the weaponry goes, the spirit of the original Urban Mech was maintained to the 2C's detriment, as the AC-10 is one of the most inappropriate weapons for the mech's role that I can think of short of just giving it a tactical nuclear warhead and calling it a day. Instead of a standard AC-10, Coyote designers added a Type 9 Ultra 10 autocannon along with two tons of ammunition. So now you can be twice as ineffective as the original until the ammunition runs out or the gun jams, leaving you almost defenseless. Now I did say almost because the mech also has an ER small laser on the nub that passes for the mech's left arm. So what are we left with here? It's a 30 ton battle mech that can move 5 MP, jump 3 MP, and has 11 points of center torso armor. It also carries an Ultra AC-10 and an ER small laser. It can't keep up with other 30 ton mechs, it's an easy target for infantry and battle armor, and Kerensky help you if that Ultra AC-10 jams. Now would you be surprised if I mentioned there was a variant for this glorious machine? In 3070, the mech's Ultra AC-10 was pulled in favor of a Hyper Assault Gauss Rifle 20 and two tons of ammunition. The ER small laser was also swapped for a standard flamer. So the brain trust involved in this product decided that the Urban Mech 2C was lacking a weapon that does scatter damage out to 24 hexes with a minimum range of two. Sorry about that. Somehow, in defiance of logic, reason, and all available evidence, they managed to find a weapon even less appropriate for urban combat than the Ultra AC-10. I don't have any good things to say about this variant. It is a bad mech. Please don't use it, not even as a joke. Because I am a glutton for punishment, I did gin up a mech frog version of the mech in hope of turning it into something marginally useful. Based upon the original 2C design, I swapped the weapons, of course, with a set that is far more appropriate for an urban conflict or policing. Because honestly, the mech's only use would be for situations where you didn't expect to do any serious fighting most of the time. It's there to look intimidating from the perspective of a ground pounder or a rioter. I first gave the mech an extra half ton of armor, which pushes it up to 6.5. It also needs the double heat sink upgrade for the monument to infantry slaying I'm about to create. Starting in the left arm, we're going to give it four AP Gauss rifles, which can lay waste to infantry that wander within the nine hex range. Two tons of ammunition can keep them running for quite a while. For long range and anti-mech work, a pair of ER medium lasers in the right arm can do some decent damage up to 15 hexes. Then at close range, four small pulse lasers can accurately lay down fire for allied units. All of these are then served by a clan targeting computer for that sweet, sweet minus one to your two hit rolls. The final product isn't heat neutral, but those ER medium lasers can easily be left alone when push comes to shove. In an emergency when you do need to alpha strike, the MF Urban Mech could do up to 38 damage, which isn't too shabby for a 30-ton mech. As far as actually trying this out, I have neither the energy or willpower to do it. I don't suggest you try it either. At just over 1,000 battle value, there's at least a dozen other mechs I can think of that you should take instead of this mech. Let's just let all of this flow off of our backs like water on a sea fox and move on. The record sheet is in the comments in the video if you do want to download it and suffer along with me. So why don't we love the Urban Mech 2C? 
It's a mech that didn't deserve the upgrade it received, and that upgrade only partially mitigated the major and unforgivable flaws in the original design. It's a mech that shouldn't exist if we go by any of the clan lore which mentions an abhorrence to waste and spending decades training a mech warrior. Even a washed up ancient clan warrior would be better off marching into battle holding a rifle than piloting this slow bullet magnet of a mech. Now, if you drop any, but I put a long time on mine and made it good, comments under this video, I'm banning you. I swear to Kerensky. Thanks for coming by today. I know this video will at least make one person happy out there, so I guess it's all worthwhile. As always, hit all the buttons if you had fun, or maybe even if you didn't. That sweet, sweet engagement sustains me. Until we meet again, take care and go make the world a slightly better place today and tomorrow.